Good morning. Welcome to church today. Thank you for joining us. We're going to have a wonderful time of worship. The team's going to come lead us. After this first song, I'm going to take a minute and uh, just share with you. And so, guys, come on up and lead us in worship. Good morning. Please stand with us as we begin this morning singing, It Is Well With My Soul. Like a river attendeth my way When the sorrows like sea billows roll Whatever my life thou hast taught me to say It is well It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, oh my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, and Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a shall resound and the Lord shall be said even so it is well with my soul it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul. Thank you. You may be seated. Well, I can't think of any better way to kick off 2021, a new year, and being here in the house of the Lord, worshiping our Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, as we look forward in this new year, uh, I'm going to do something that some of you might get upset with me about at first. That is, I want to look back for a moment at 2020. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because we know that God was in control of 2020. And the Bible tells us that we are to always give thanks to the Lord for what He has done and what He is doing. In fact, here's what the psalmist says in Psalm 105. It says, give thanks to the Lord. Call on His name. Proclaim His deeds among the peoples. Sing to Him. Sing praise to Him. Tell about all His wondrous works. Boast in His holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. 
Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face. Always remember the wondrous works he has done, his wonders and the judgments he has pronounced. Listen, when we think about the goodness of God, I see God's hand all over the last year. I think back to Easter when the tornadoes came through, and you realize God helped use our church uh, to, to get supplies from Cookville down here to Hamilton County. We helped coordinate that to get supplies here to meet people's needs all throughout Hamilton County through those tornadoes. Of course, many people in our area were struggling because of because all the layoffs, because of the pandemic, and people were hungry and they needed food. And throughout this year, we were able to meet those needs through an, an initiative to food deserts where we were providing funds to help feed those that needed to come get groceries through our association and some other local churches. We have seen over 2020 numerous people come uh, to into membership here at our church. Uh, we, have, we have seen uh, people baptized in 2020. There's many things that you need to look back on over this past year and give thanks to God for. Maybe it's you've been able to spend more time with your kids than you've ever been able to before. Well, I tell you what, that's something to praise God about right there. And so there's so much. But now, you know, there's also many people that I just want to pray for today because there's many needs. And so I want to mention two in particular, um, our, our, our dear brothers and sisters, uh, the Baker family. Many of them are here with us today. But as you know, and as we've been praying, um, Brother Chuck's father is has been in the hospital and he's just not doing very well. And so we want to continue to remember that whole family, be praying for them. Uh, Mary Barker uh, is dealing with a lot in her family. She wants us to just continue to, to pray for them as well. And let me just say this right now. You have needs on your heart today that I've not mentioned. And so as we go to the Lord in prayer, I want you to just allow those to, to come up and go to the Lord as we, as we go to Him in prayer. Let's pray. Father, God, You have been so good to us. We see Your goodness. Lord, Your mercies, they are new every morning. You're so faithful to us. God, even when we are faithless, You remain faithful. And we praise you because you are the King of kings, you are the Lord of lords, and Jesus, we come here today to worship you. Lord, we look forward to, to what you're going to do in this coming year. God, I believe this coming year is going to be a year that you use your church in a mighty way. But Lord, we also look back and we just thank you for what you have done over the course of the last year. What you've taught us, what you've reminded us about yourself. Lord, and we pray, God, for those that are hurting right now. Many in this room have a, have a need, a burden on their heart. We lift those to you because, God, that's what you command us to do. We pray for the Baker family. We pray for Mary Barker and her family. And Lord, you know everything that's going on in those situations, and we just entrust those things and those people to you. God, you be glorified and you be magnified through everything that's going on in our lives. And Jesus, we praise you because you're the Savior and you love us and you have come into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who you have sent to us. And so God, we ask that you would lead us in this service, do a work in us as we worship. And it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, before these guys get to singing, Kids, I didn't forget about you, okay? So I have something I want to show you and I want to teach you about today. The problem is it would not fit in the box, all right? So let me go get it. It would not fit in the box. All right. Now then, you see this, don't you? That is right. Marley, did you say that? Good job. Kids, you know what this is? This is a cross. You may wonder why I'm 
having this today and holding this up for you? Well, I'll tell you why. We just celebrated Christmas. And now what? When we were celebrating Christmas, we were celebrating the fact that Jesus came, weren't we? And he was born. Good, good. Good job. Yeah, he was born. And he was born in a, do you remember where he was born in? Bethlehem, that's right. He was in a manger. And was Jesus, when he was born, was he real big or was he a little bitty baby? That's right, he was. All right, but now here's what I want you to remember and to know. That when Jesus came and he was born, did you know that he came so that when he got bigger, he would actually die on a cross like this? Jesus, he was nailed to a cross like this. And here's why. Now this is important. He was nailed to a cross so that he could pay for our sin. Jesus went on the cross because of our sin. Now, you know what sin is, don't you? You remember what sin is? Anybody, can any kid tell me, can re remind me about that? All right, good. Something you do that's not good. Sawyer, did you say something? All right. Who said something? I heard something. What'd she say? Lying. Yeah, lying is a sin, all right? And so we have all sinned, haven't we? But Jesus died on the cross so we could be forgiven of that sin. Don't you forget that, okay? Now, before, before these singers take back over, I want us to take a moment and let's pray for our kids today, okay? Father, Lord, I thank you for our kids. Lord, they're such a blessing to us. We know that you have created them and your hand is upon their lives. We pray, God, that you would help them to understand today and to see that, that Jesus, you died on the cross for their sin. And Lord, it's our prayer that every child in this room would come to that place where they would place their faith and trust in you for salvation. Lord, we love you today, and we just pray that you would draw them to you, and at that perfect time, they would understand their need for you. They would repent of their sin and trust in you, Jesus. Lord, we pray that you would make these kids into mighty warriors for your kingdom. Use them in a mighty way. And Lord, we trust that you're going to do it. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If Good job, kiddos. If you would stand to your feet again, we're going to teach you a new version of uh, what you may traditionally know as the doxology. But this is called God Be Praised. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father. Son and Holy Ghost. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit now in us. Every moment, all our days, God be praised, oh God be praised. Praise God with morning's breaking light. Praise Him through darkness of the night. Praise Him with every breath of life. Praise the Father, praise the 
Son, praise the Spirit now with us, every moment, all our days, God be praised, oh God be praised, praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit now with us, every moment, all our days, God be praised, oh God be praised. Praise God when face to face we see. The one who died to set us free. And the one who rose in victory. Praise now forever, Christ our King. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit now with us. Every moment, all our days, God be praised, oh God be praised. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit now with us. Every moment, all our days, God be praised, oh God be Jesus, ruler of all nature, oh, thou of God and man the Son, thee will I cherish, and thee
I'm going to ask you to turn with me in your Bible. I hope you have a Bible here today. A good habit for you to get in for this new year would be getting your Bible handy, and having it with you when you come to church. It's very important. Today we're going we're gonna to be in a couple different places. But we've been in a study in the book of Jude, and that's what we're going to begin in. Uh, finishing up a, a part two of a sermon we started last Sunday, there was just so much in it that we wanted to take take time so that we could see all that God would have to, to share with us. And so in Jude verses 14 through 16, uh, we have a powerful passage here that brings to our attention a man by the name of Enoch. And so as we, as we look at this today, I want us to sort of think about this question, how can I please God in a world gone mad? How can I please God in a place that's full of wickedness and ungodliness? You know, if we in here are Christians today, that, that should be our desire. Our desire should be to please God with our lives. So how is it that we can please God? Well, through the life of Enoch, I believe God shows us what He desires from us and how we can live in a way that pleases Him, that pleases God. And so I'm going to catch us back up with verses 14 and 15, but then we're going to go to some other places in Scripture today, so keep your Bible handy. Starting in verse 14, let's read the Word of the Lord. Here's what it Here's what the Word of God says. It was about these that Enoch in the seventh generation from Adam prophesied, Look, the Lord comes with tens of thousands of His holy ones to execute judgment on all and to convict all the ungodly concerning all the ungodly acts that they have done in an ungodly way and concerning all the harsh things ungodly sinners have said against Him. Enoch lived in a day that was wicked. We talked last week, and if you weren't here, let me just tell you, because this is important for our study today. We saw last week that Enoch lived in a day that was wicked. In fact, you know the story of the flood in Genesis chapter 6, Noah and the flood. Enoch is Noah's great granddaddy. And the Bible tells us that in those days, the human mind was evil all the time. Everything going on in that world, everything going on in that time, these are those early days after creation. The world had just grown in sinfulness and evil and wickedness and ungodliness. But yet here was this man Enoch living in those days and he was a prophet of God that God used to tell the people and warn the people. He would say, look, the Lord is coming. 
And he's coming to execute judgment on those that are ungodly. And what we know is that the days that Enoch lived in and that ungodliness and that wickedness is actually much like the days we live in today. Because we see that we live in a world that constantly desires evil. And ungodliness is growing. And wickedness is growing. And so our day is much like the day that Enoch lived in. But yet here is Enoch, and what we're going to find that God tells us about Enoch is that Enoch was a man that pleased God with his life. And, and he pleased God in such a way that God blessed him in a very special way. And so I want you to look with me in Genesis chapter 5. And in Genesis chapter 5 is where we're going to get the story, if you will, of Enoch. Now here's something interesting about Enoch. In all of Scripture, there's not many words given to the life of Enoch. In Genesis chapter 5, verses 21 through 24, we have that short little passage that describes for us Enoch, and it doesn't tell us much about him. A couple other places in Scripture, there is a verse given to Enoch. We see a little passage given to Enoch there in Jude that we've read. So there's not much that's said about Enoch, but even though there's few words given to the life of Enoch, those words are some of the most powerfully written words in Scripture. The words that are written about Enoch speak very loudly to us and should grab our attention. You've probably walked through a graveyard before. Maybe you've buried a loved one and you've gone through the cemetery and as you go through the cemetery, you, you look at all of those headstones, those tombstones, and as you're looking at those, there's usually just something very short written. Usually like a family name is written, maybe the, the name of a, some loved ones, a spouse, the, the date of of when that person was born and the date that person uh, died on. And, you know, sometimes people have another kind of thing that they'll put on there that maybe describes the life of the person, maybe just a short saying. And uh, I was reading up on some of those. And there's some funny ones out there, where people that have put some funny ones out. I'll, one of those I'll share with you said, Beneath this stone, my husband doth lie. Now he's at rest, and so am I. You know, one might read something like this. So-and-so always loved to party, but now the party is over. In Genesis chapter 5, you could call this chapter literally the roll call of death. Genesis chapter 5 is like the graveyard in Scripture. It's like walking down through the cemetery and you just see tombstone after tombstone after tombstone. And, and what it tells you is it gives you a family name. It gives you the name of a person coming here through the line of Seth. And it tells you that they, they had some children and then they died. And if you read through that chapter, you see that time and time again. So-and-so lived, so-and-so died. And that's all it says. So-and-so lived, and then so-and-so died. And then you get to verse 21, and you get to the life of Enoch, and it's totally different than all the others in that chapter. I want to read this for you. Chapter 5 in Genesis, starting in verse 21. It says, Enoch was 65 years old when he fathered Methuselah. And after he fathered Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years. 
and fathered other sons and daughters. You know what I find interesting about that when I read that? I, I found this true in, in my life. Maybe you have found this true in your life. But it says that Enoch fathered a son. And then after Enoch fathered a son, he started to walk with God. Enoch fathered this son, Methuselah, and something happened in his life during that period of time. After having a child, he had uh, an encounter with God. Now, I don't know if it was because he's had his first child that that got his attention. I've seen that happen in people's lives. I've seen people that were, were, were living one way, and, and all of a sudden, um, they had a child, and, and man... They, they got a little bit more serious about walking with God. I don't know if that's what happened. It could have just been that one day God got a hold of Enoch's life and grabbed a hold of him, and Enoch said, yes, I, I see this now. But it says that he fathered this son, Methuselah, and, and then Enoch walked with God for 300 years, he fathered other sons and daughters. Look at verse 23. So Enoch's life lasted 365 years. Enoch walked with God. Then he was not there because God took him. Now you might not catch what that means right there. If you read that chapter, you'll see person after person was born and then they died was born, and then they died, was born, and then they died, was born, and then they died. And Scripture's taken us through this graveyard of people that were born, and then they died. There's not much said about them. And then you come to Enoch, and the Bible says, wait a second, there's something different about this man. This man, Enoch, he was born, he had a son, but then Enoch, for all of these years, he walked with God, and he didn't die. He walked with God, and then he was no longer there. He walked with God, and then he was taken. Enoch walked with God, and God took him straight to heaven. You realize there is there are two people in Scripture that lived on this planet and then went straight to heaven without dying. Enoch is one of them. Elijah is the other. And as I was thinking about that, I think maybe we ought to start naming people with a E as the first letter of their name. There's Enoch, and he walked with God, and then God took him straight to heaven without dying. There is Elijah, and Elijah was a prophet of God, and God took him straight to heaven without dying. Now, let me ask you something. When you think about that fact, that Enoch is one of the only two people in Scripture we see that God did that for. And God shows us this in the middle of this graveyard. It's like you're walking down this graveyard. There's tombstone, tombstone, tombstone. Then you just get a memorial stone that says, there's no body under here. We just placed this here so you would know about this person. There's no body because they were taken. Would that not make you want to stop today and say, what? was going on in Enoch's life. It does for me. And what Scripture is going to reveal to us is that if we desire to please God, we can take some notes from the life of Enoch today. The work that God did in Enoch's life is a work God wants to do in our lives. I want to share with you really three Things today, I believe, that can you can take and apply into your life that's going to help you in 2021, but not only this year, but for the rest of your life. Live a life in a world gone mad for Jesus. Live a life that pleases God. What we know about Enoch is that Enoch pleased God by faith. I want you to turn with me to Hebrews chapter 11. You know what's been fascinating to me? And maybe this would be a good study for you as you start the new year. This would be a real good study for you is study Hebrews chapter 11. We have looked at Hebrews 11 many, many times through our study in Jude. In Hebrews 11, we see about Abel. 
In Hebrews 11, we see about Moses. We see about Noah. We see about Abraham. And in Hebrews chapter 11, it tells us about Enoch. And in, and in verse 5, I want you to see this with me. Now, here's something else that's interesting. Enoch is in what we would call in the Bible, there in Genesis 5, he's in the roll call of death in Genesis 5, but yet he did not die. In Hebrews, you know what we call Hebrews chapter 11? We call Hebrews chapter 11 the roll call of faith, the hall of faith. He's in both of those. He's in chapter 5 of Genesis, and he did not die. And then he's in Hebrews chapter 11, the roll call of faith. And God tells us why it is that Enoch pleased God. Look at this. Verse 5, By faith Enoch was taken away, and so he did not experience death. So if you were wondering if Enoch in Genesis 5 actually just died and God took him to heaven, there's your answer. It says in Genesis 5, he was taken away. And then God tells us in Hebrews chapter 11 that it wasn't that he died and then was taken to heaven. He literally was walking one day and God took him straight to heaven. By faith, Enoch was taken away and so he did not experience death. He was not to be found because God took him away. For before he was taken away, he was approved as one who pleased God. Let me ask you something today. Would God look at you today and say, you are one approved that pleases Him? Enoch was one approved that pleased God. Here's the key, verse 6. Now, without faith, it is impossible to please God since the one who draws near to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. What was different about Enoch? It's that word right there. Faith is what was different about Enoch. Enoch had faith. You know, each and every one of us in here today, we all have faith. The question is, where are you placing your faith? Enoch had faith, and he placed his faith in the Lord God. Enoch believed in God. Enoch trusted in the Lord. And Enoch lived a life according to faith. Listen, faith is what God calls us to. It says there in Hebrews eleven six 6, that it is impossible. Hear that again. It is impossible. To please God without faith. Friend, you and I will not ever please God with anything in our life if faith is not involved in it. We must live by faith and we must believe in God by faith. Enoch was a man who lived and walked by faith. And it pleased God his faith did. Now, when you think about faith, there's something we must always remember. There are some keys to faith that we need to remember. One of the first things you always need to remember is that Jesus is the object of our faith. Faith, the Bible, when the Bible's talking about faith here, it's not just talking about placing your faith in anything. It's about having your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You can place your faith in a number of different places. But that faith doesn't mean anything unless that faith is placed in and on Jesus. Believe in Him. See, Enoch believed in the Lord God. Enoch walked with God. Enoch received a word from God, and as a prophet, he prophesied that he said, Look, remember we talked about it last week. Way back there in Genesis, Enoch said, Look, I see Jesus coming with his saints to execute judgment. Uh, Enoch tells us, the Bible tells us that Enoch was preaching 
what John tells us in Revelation chapter 19. Is that not amazing? Yes, it is. Because Enoch had faith. He looked, he saw, he believed. He believed in the Lord. Here's another key to faith. Faith operates believing Jesus rewards those who live by faith. That's what it says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. It says that since the one who draws near to him must believe that he exists, and so the object of our faith, the Lord Jesus, he is the Lord God, he has come, he has died on the cross, He's been resurrected. He's at the right hand of the Father. There He is in glory right now, and He's coming again one day. He exists, and my faith is in Him, and I believe His Word and His promises. He says He blesses, He rewards those who live by faith. He rewards those who seek Him. Listen, when, if you've ever flown, maybe you'll get, maybe we'll all get comfortable again here soon to fly again. For me, it takes a, it takes a level of faith for me to get on an airplane. And as I'm walking up the terminal, and I'm going through that breezeway, I know that there's going to come a a time that I'm going to step over a threshold and I'm going to enter that airplane and I'm never going to see the pilot. I might hear his voice. I'm never going to see him. He's up there in the front where he's going to be flying it. But, But friend, when I get on that airplane and when I go and I take my seat and I buckle up, I have a level of faith that I believe that pilot, he's going to be able to fly this thing and land that plane. We must have Faith in Jesus Christ. You must believe that He exists. You must believe that He has accomplished the work on the cross to offer you salvation and for you to receive that salvation. And you must trust Him that you can follow Him And that He's going to take you exactly where He wants you to go. go, And He's going to get you there safely. And He's going to get you to glory. Let me just say this right now. If you do not have faith in Jesus, you are going to have a lot of trouble understanding the rest of this message. Because... A walk with God first starts with faith in Jesus. We're going to start talking about some things right here in a moment about walking with God and about the fact that Jesus is coming again. And some of these things aren't going to make much sense to you at all. But I'll tell you right now, if you will place your faith in Jesus, it will make sense. And you'll be able to believe it and to know that it is true. And so I encourage you right now, if you're in this room, you've never trusted in Jesus, I'm going to say right now, even while this message continues to go on, I want you to right there, just go ahead and start praying. I want you to repent of your sin. You just say, God, forgive me of my sin. I place my faith in Jesus. Maybe you're watching online. You need to do that right now. At the end of this service, I'm going to give an invitation. There'll be a time for you to respond. If you decide that you've trusted in Jesus today, I want you to come forward and make that public. But you need to do that today. How can you please God in a world gone mad? How can you please God in 2021? How can you please God with the rest of your life? Well, number one, you must have faith. You've got to live by faith. Number two, walk with God by faith. Walk with God by faith. Did you know that God created us to
who walk with him in a real relationship. We're going to be finished here with Hebrews. I want you to turn back to Genesis with me. Turn back to Genesis with me. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8 tells us this. Look at this. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. You know what I just read for you there? That's Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve are there in the garden that God created. He created Adam, he created Eve, he created the garden, and there they were. And did you know that God created Adam and Eve that they would actually know God in an intimate way, that they would walk with God. And so the Bible tells us that, that before sin, their God was walking with them in the garden. And, and, and then Adam and Eve sinned, and God came to the garden to walk with Adam, to walk with Eve. It was this cool, beautiful day, and here they were, and God came to walk. And when Adam heard God in the garden, you know what Adam did? Adam, he ran and he hid from the presence of God. When God came to walk with Adam there in Genesis chapter 3, Adam hid in fear. Do you know that God, he, he desires to walk with you today in a real relationship? And I wonder how many of us are like Adam. When God comes to walk with us, because of the shame and the guilt of our sin, instead of receiving Him, we run off and hide in fear. Adam ran off and he hid in fear when God came to walk with him. But you know, we see something different with Enoch. Because when God came to walk with Enoch, what did the Bible teach us so far? That Enoch walked by faith. If you and I are going to walk with God, then we're going to have to do it the same way Enoch did it. And that is walking with God by faith. You can't walk with God any other way. But I'm, I'm, a, I'm afraid that many of us in this room, in many of us in our community and in this world, instead of walking with God by faith, we are running and hiding from Him with fear. How many of us in this room, if God came to walk with you today, would be like Adam and Eve and try to hide from Him? Or would you today take that step out and say, I'll walk with you, God, today by faith? To walk with God, be a person of repentance. Can I tell you something? Enoch wasn't a perfect man. Because there's only been one perfect man, and that's Jesus Christ. Adam sinned. Adam's family members sinned. And Enoch was the seventh from Adam. And you know, Enoch was a sinner. There's no doubt Enoch was a man that had sinned. But Enoch obviously was a man of repentance. He knew that he was a sinner, and he knew that God forgave sinners. And Enoch was a man that walked with God by faith. You want to walk with God by faith today? Be a person of repentance. When's the last time you've repented in your life? If you haven't repented in your life recently, then guess what? If God came to walk with you, you, like Adam, would probably run off in shame and hide in fear. But if you'll become a person of repentance, you can begin each day afresh and anew, knowing today's a day I can walk with God by faith. And friend, when, when, when sin creeps up in your life, when that temptation comes, and, and you know you don't have to give in to that temptation, but, in, but if you do, and when that day does come that you give in to that sim temptation, you sin, you need to get, get along with God as soon as you can and repent and ask God to forgive you of that. You want to walk with God by faith? Be a person of repentance repentance. Don't be afraid to go to God in repentance. God desires for you to come to Him and ask for forgiveness, and He will give it to you. That's why Jesus died on the cross, is to set you free, to forgive you of your sin, and to give you new life. To walk with God, be a person who gives Him a daily reception. Do you give God a reception in your life? Uh, does he have an invitation to, to come and to walk with you today? You say, well, maybe today he does, maybe for this hour. 
What about later today? Does he still have a reception that you're giving him? What about tomorrow? Are you going to have a reception for God that, that you've invited Him and you say, God, I want to walk with you right now by faith. If you want to walk with God by faith, then be a person that has a reception ready for Him, a daily reception. To walk with God like Enoch, never leave God's presence. Listen, Enoch didn't just have any kind of walk with God by faith. He had such a walk with God by faith that one day God said, just come on home with me. Uh, listen, it, it's as if he was never leaving the presence of God. You know, the Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. Are, are you always in the presence of God? Are you consumed with prayer and reading and meditating upon His Word? To walk with God, you have to walk by faith. And friend, let me tell you this as we go to our, our, third, our third and final point today. Faith is forward-looking. Do you realize that? Faith is forward-looking. Faith is looking forward to something that maybe you can't even see. Faith is taking a step somewhere that you don't even know where it's going to lead. Faith is stepping out into something that where you just say, I'm trusting that God is going to provide in this situation, that God's going to provide during this time. Faith is forward looking. Faith is not, hey, I, I know this is going to work out, so I'm going to do this. Because it really doesn't take faith to do that. Faith is stepping out, believing that God is going to take you there. Faith is forward looking. And so when I think about the fact that faith is forward-looking, here's something that separated Enoch. His faith was so forward-looking. Before Jesus even came the first time to be born in Bethlehem, his faith was so forward-looking, he looked beyond that to the point that he, Jesus was coming again one day with his saints. And so here's what I'd say to you today. Live like Jesus is coming. Live like Jesus is coming. Friends, that's something we've lost, I believe. And I've been reminded of that. What we used to in the church talk about how it, we need to live as if Jesus is coming back later today. As if Jesus is coming back this week. How's Jesus going to find you when He comes back? Because you know it could be today. Do you believe it? Th this is what separated Enoch. In fact, friends, this is what I believe separated the early church from us today. God laid that on my heart this week. I was, I was thinking... Why is that why when we read about the early church, why why were they so dynamic and things so different from them? Uh, why was it that they turned the world so up, upside down? Why is it that they would be at church, they, they would worship, they would give their lives for the gospel, but we won't? Oh, why was it? Was it because they had the Holy Spirit? Yeah, but you know what? We have the Holy Spirit. Uh, was it because that they had literally seen Jesus before His death and, and some of them saw Jesus at His time of ascension? Yeah, they, they saw that, but many of them didn't. Especially in those centuries later. We have the same testimony as all of those other saints. We know Jesus came. We know He died on the cross. We know He's been resurrected. What separates them from us? I, I believe the answer is this right here. The early church actually lived believing Jesus was coming soon. They believed it. They lived like it. They said, we only have so much time. He's coming and He has told us to go and to share this gospel with this lost and dying world. The saints of old lived like Jesus was coming. Friend, you and I, we've got to get back to that. 
How will your life look different in 2021 if you live in 2021 like Jesus is coming this year? Would your life look a little different? I know mine will. What will your life look like this week believing that Jesus could come back this week? Would your life look a little bit different? Is there somebody out there that you need to tell Jesus loves you and He desires for you to be saved? Because you remember what Enoch said? When Jesus comes again, He's not coming to make peace. Jesus is coming on the white horse as the warrior king and He is executing His judgment. All we have is right now until Jesus comes again. In fact, Enoch, Enoch is a picture for us of what is going to happen when Jesus returns. You realize that? I want you to turn with me. This is where we're going to close. You don't have to turn if I'm, I'm already there, but 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse 15, I want you to hear this. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 15 says, For we say this to you by a word from the Lord. We who are still alive at the Lord's coming, coming will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the archangel's voice, and with the, trump, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Listen, when Jesus comes again, He's going to come and He's going to rapture the church. He's going to do that before He comes again. He's going to step out in the clouds and the trumpet's going to sound and He's going to call all of His saints whose bodies are buried there in those graves. He's going to call them forth and they are going to come out of the grave, and they're going to be given glorified bodies, and they are going to ascend there to where Jesus is. And if Jesus comes this week, if Jesus comes this year, and you and I have not died, we're going to experience something a little bit like Enoch experienced. Because listen to what this says. Then we who are still alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. One day while God and Enoch were walking, Enoch had lived by such faith that like God tried to do with Adam, God came down and He visited with Enoch. And there they were, walking the paths. And there God and Enoch were, were walking and they were talking like they had been doing for so, so long. God looked over to Enoch during this time, and he said, Enoch, we have been walking together for so long. Enoch, do you realize that we've been walking together for so long? We are closer to my house now than we are to yours. Why don't you just come home with me? And without suffering death, the Lord took Enoch and he transported him to glory, to be with him forever. Friend, God's going to do it again. Friend, God desires to walk with you. It should be your and my desire to please God. And as we've studied Scripture today, here's what we know. If we're going to please God, then we must live by faith. We must walk with God by faith. 
And we must live each day like Jesus is coming again. Because He is. And what a glorious day that will be. Let's bow our heads.